Now, Podcast One brings you Spike's Car Radio, a downloadable cars and coffee, hosted by writer, comedian, and automotive enthusiast, Spike Ferriston. Now, here's Spike. Welcome to Spike's Car Radio. Welcome to Malibu. We're here for you, folks. We've left a seat open for you, the listener, and I'm here with Matt Farah. I'm here with Zuckerman. And today... True, embarrassing car stories. You know, guys, I didn't know if this would work. Uh, I did a little post asking for embarrassing car stories. 70 stories to get, get through oh on top of our own. But I thought I would kick it off by asking you guys, what are your embarrassing car stories? Go ahead, Farrah, start. I'll go, start uh, us hi, off here. Hi, Spike. How are you? What's happening? <laughs> uh, I have, this is <clears throat> no fruit. prep because I didn't follow I'll your take a post. Piece of but... Uh, first day, uh, sophomore year of college. We'll go back to me, 19 year old Matt. I had a I had a modified uh, Mustang that was uh, you know had a big cam in it, loud exhaust, you know the whole deal, right? And you weren't allowed to have a car in college fresh freshman year. So sophomore year, I brought my car down, and I was very excited to have a cool you know hot rod on on campus. That was like a thing. I get there, I unpack my stuff. And I go to the area where it's like sort of in front of the library. They call the the quad. It's, it's the, one of the most public places on campus that you can bring a car. And I proceed to rip through like a second gear brake stand. <laughs> I do just dump the clutch brake stand, and I do a nice big smoky burnout in front of the library. And I am then pulled over by not one, not two, not three, six campus police wow. officers on bicycles. <laughs> wow. I am surrounded. That's great. I'm surrounded by bicycle cops and issued a reckless driving citation. My very first day on campus with my loud red Mustang. Now, Good this, was a, Lord. this was a citation issued by the campus. You had to go to the campus <laughs> registrar. Yes, I had, to, I had to go pay through the campus police. It had nothing to do with the DMV. It was very <laughs> funny. <laughs> that a, is a truly weak ticket for a weak move. Yeah. Embarrassing. <laughs> I, I would say I'm embarrassed, you know, at least once a month in a car, right, Zuckerman? What are your you you I've I know I've seen legion. some of your embarrassing car legion. stories. We've all experienced each other's. I, I with embarrassing like you know you you and I and Jerry were out and and Jerry had an embarrassing car story. A lot of times we kind of keep these stories to ourselves. We don't. They're embarrassing because they're embarrassing. <laughs> we don't want the other people in the car world to hear them. But I thought. That's why we should do this show. We should all talk about this because we're all like each other, right? Whenever, whenever you've gotten in an accident, I remember getting in an accident in a uh, my seventy nine eleven S original everything, and I talked to a couple guys about it. And they said, "Yeah, that, it's happened of all to all of us." When I mean, there's what an about accident, the- there's a picture of. They go, "Don't take pictures. I don't want anybody to know." It's okay. It's okay that we this stuff all happens. This happens. Have to- failures, right? Listen, and people stuff two hundred and fifty GTOs into walls, <clears throat> you know? right? People exactly. Stuff all kinds of stuff. Into but it, but we all laugh. But really, we know we're all capable of this behavior. Zuckerman, uh, give you, us one of yours, I, and we'll pepper these throughout the rest of this broadcast. We yeah. will. We will. We will tell well, more I, of these. Stories, you know, I, I remember in college, I must have been in my second semester, of my first year, and there was a girl that was stunningly beautiful, and she kind of liked me as a friend, but I was always a little nervous around her, and she had her father's seven series BMW. And she, we went out for a ride, and she was really proud that she had the car. I don't know if she had permission or not, but I got out of the car, and I, and I flung the door back, closed behind me, and the window shattered into a million <laughs> fucking pieces everywhere. Oh, absolute man. hysteria oh, and absolute, God. like, okay, here it is, you know, 40 years later. I, I still remember that feeling of, of our absolute shame. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's so bad. Yeah. I've had so many myself. I've, I've, uh... You know, pulling into the hangar. I've been down to Santa Monica Airport for 20 years. At least once a year, I forget to put the parking brake on, <laughs> and I go to unlock the hangar door, and I see my car rolling <laughs> down <laughs> towards Harrison Ford's hangar. It just, you know, imagine that, crashing yep. into him. He's the king of crash, and I'm <laughs> crashing into him. Is anybody <clears throat> more forgiven behind the, the yeah. wheel or a stick than Han Solo? One of my, yeah. I think, very first embarrassing car stories Aside from running from the cops once and getting caught with my girlfriend, 
this is where you learn the police are always going to they're they're always going to catch you was I and this is the same girl. I really wanted to surprise my girlfriend with James Taylor tickets at the uh, Cape Cod Coliseum, right? And I wanted to get front row seats. And the way to get those front row seats was to show up early when that box office opens at the Cape Cod Coliseum. There's no internet, right? You're There's no phone call. The you got to go. you got to get in line. And tickets go on sale at 9 a.m. Oh. And, well, I stayed out very late and uh, was partying with my friends because I'm young, right? Yeah. Stayed out till 2 or 3 in the morning, slept a couple hours. Alarm clock goes off, and I race out to, I think it was in Hyannis, and I'm in Falmouth. I'm racing out there, getting there. Beer cans still in the car from the night As before. You do. I've never been at the Cape Cod Coliseum. I'm racing down this road. There's no ways. There's no navigation. It's just road map. And I see the sign for Cape Cod Coliseum too late and the entry. But I try to execute the turn <laughs> the in my white, black Mercury Montego yes. that weighs 70 tons. The front tires turn. The car does not. And I crash into a tree. <laughs> The at the front of the, of the parking lot. This is a car my parents had bought for me, and they specifically said, don't crash this one. Had you crashed uh, others? Don't my crash brother this had. One? They had oh, forgotten. Okay. My brother had crashed the, pre- crashed the previous car. I don't hit that hard because I did a long skid through the dirt, and then I crashed. The beer cans go forward, and I make the split-second decision because I'm at the very outside of that parking lot. Yeah. Fuck it. I'm, I'm walking. I'm running. To the box office, it's 9.01. I've got to get in line. So I haul ass across this long parking lot. And as I'm getting closer, I'm noticing there's no line. There's no line at the box office. And I open the door. There's no one inside. There's just a woman sitting there at a little window. And I go, I'd like two tickets to James Taylor. She goes, oh, okay. She goes, what's the rush? They're general admission. I go, what? <laughs> she goes, they're general admission. You can just you buy the tickets. You can just go in. I go, oh, my God. <laughs> and I, I had that long walk back to across the parking car. lot to, to the, the crash, crash car Montego. and a cop. The cops, <laughs> not just one, who are looking at the bear cans. This your car, sir? Yes, it is. But this is the, you know, this is the golden old days. Yeah. I, I was embarrassed to sell. I didn't need to rush. You I could have bought tickets any time. I wasn't drunk. The guy, what are the beer cans this morning or last night? I go, last night. And he goes, okay. Get <laughs> he goes, well, it looks like it still drives. I didn't even get a ticket. But I was embarrassed. I was yeah. hugely embarrassed. And the parents, it, what a fat say. What's that? What a fat say about the Montego. Well, back, back in that, my parents didn't notice things. <laughs> they, you know, they never know. I was telling my wife this story it's of how. It's drivable. It's not really crashed. How my brother, who crashed the previous car, was trying to pull the dent out with a chain in the tree, remember? Yeah. And how my parents came home that day and didn't even notice there was a car in the backyard with a bumper. <laughs> a, a te- I mean, it was. it's amazing what they didn't notice. So. Every time I visited home, I would pull the Montego up against the garage door <laughs> close, knowing they could only see the rear of the car and that they would never go look at a car, and they'd never notice. That's the hilarious. The whole summer, they didn't notice. <laughs> Isn't that amazing that a kid's strategy like that worked? The yeah. 70s, yep. The 70s. Anyway, I want to get on to the listener embarrassing stories. Now, I'm gonna, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read these out to the best of my ability, and you guys can comment on them. Uh, Marco Girassi. We I was, know Marco. You say that every time. Was 14 years old riding my Benelli moped around the neighborhood as fast as it would go. Blew through a stop sign in front of a school and got pulled over by a motorcycle cop. No license, no insurance, no registration. And the cop gave me a tif- ticket. I promptly buried that ticket in a drawer for two years until I went to get, from my, look, get my learner's permit and found out there was a bench warrant for <laughs> failure to appear. The whole ordeal cost me $800 in fines and a day in juvenile court with my very angry dad. That's hardcore. Yeah. That's hardcore. Great story and nothing's changed for Marco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sounds like uh, the Marco I know and love. But imagine that. You're going... Like, it's already hard enough to get your parents to just take you when you have your driver's permit. Just practice driving, right? I mean, I... And then you find out you have an arrest warrant (laughs) already? 
I, I've gone to great lengths to not make the hi, hi dad, I'm in jail phone call at, at my own expense, honestly. I got, I got yoinked in New York City for allegedly street racing. I wasn't racing. It was just me and another guy going real fast. But the police decided that that was racing. So I was arrested and put in the tombs. And the cops and whoever was down there was like, oh, no, you'll just be out in the morning. They'll just, like, let you out, ROR, and no problem. No, they don't, they don't do that. You actually have to get a lawyer to get you out. And I didn't want to call my dad. I was too embarrassed to call my dad that I was, I was like, oh, I made it 25 years without being in jail. I don't want to start now. And uh, because of that, I didn't want to call my dad. I sat there for three days. Oof. And eventually I went kind of crazy, called him, <laughs> and I was out in, like, 90 minutes. Wow. Unbelievable. You just actually, I had a repressed memory. This is like, well, yeah, they being on the shrinks table. <laughs> yeah. and, and I actually, yes, yeah. I was arrested. I actually was arrested. <laughs> I was arrested and spent 48 hours in the clink. It's not as and, embarrassing uh, as the bike and, cops at college. Yeah. Why were you arrested? Well, I had this theory. When I moved out here, if you recall, we had paper driver's licenses. We didn't have a picture, and it was pre kind of pre-computer. And so I had a theory, which was probably true for a while, that they could give me as many parking tickets and speeding tickets and whatever tickets as they wanted out here. And I just had a free pass because I had a New York driver's license. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 the, and, you know, I love the arrogance of ignorance. And uh, I was and it, it did work because I was getting pulled over all the time or, or getting tickets. Nothing was happening. And then in 1985, I was in Hermosa. I was in, I had a 74 Coupe de Ville black with a red leather interior and a giant dent on it and I'd gotten it for 200 bucks and I got pulled over on Pier Avenue in Hermosa Beach and the cop said, "Well, Mr. Zuckerman, <laughs> we can't believe you're still out here driving around." <laughs> and uh, and yeah, <clears throat> and that was a Friday night, so I was in And until- they said you got you, you got all of these unpaid tickets and warrants out for you. Uh, I, I see. I, had, I, see. I think I had seven warrants out for my arrest. <laughs> and uh, oh, I like totally packed that one down. And I funny. had to call my parents, and I had to cry, and they had to hire a lawyer. And uh, <laughs> after and, that, were you like, I want to be a lawyer? I got. Isn't that amazing how parents like help you out? And in then that and the greatest thing was at that point, since the tickets were now in the, with with the prosecutor's office, my attorney knew all. All those guys and they just dismissed everything yeah. all the money came back then then yeah. the fix was in yeah and so it was all good but those three days in in <laughs> the Hermosa this... beach lockup really sucked. <laughs> <laughs> what and happened I, in there nothing other than i was just I, you just take terrible, your you're a kid, right they take the fucking string out of your hoodie yeah you, know, you get bad sandwiches uh you you, you, you just kind of go what, stir crazy yeah. what about your cellmates did you see any cellmates they, or were you yeah, worried you're we gonna were get all the same pathetic losers and we all you know we had bo from sin in the it, we all just see, stunk and yeah, it was yeah. horrible dude yeah. in new york city when i sat in jail it was different. not that no. it was not all the same pathetic no no losers. no there were a lot of people who had been arrested for stabbing people that night. There was a lot of stabbings that had gone on. That right, night. because in New York they just collect everybody. everybody no matter and what you did, you're off. in the same. I was That's sitting right. next to a guy looking at his third strike, and I'm wearing a Rolex Kermit, <clears throat> going, "Yeah, if we were outside this cage, this would be his fourth strike, and I would be a fucking pool of blood on the floor." That's oh, terrifying. Yeah, up. and one guy, dude, a guy, a guy was a guy was smoking weed in yes. jail, and I was like. Oh, my God. I was so mind blown. <laughs> this dude was like, yo, you've got a match? I'm like, no, I don't got a match. And someone else has a, mat- has a match. But they wanted me to throw it across the hall to the other cell on the other side. Like, just throw it. I'm like, no. you th-. And they and they just would, someone Jesus. threw it. And they were just blazing in Manhattan Central Booking. It was it was wild, dude. Central Booking. Well, you know. A lot of stuff. We've already frisk. changed the subject of today's Sorry. broadcast. It's now Our real. Our criminal experiences. <laughs> like Lock up. Experience. Lock up Malibu. <laughs> How many times the three of us have been arrested in our prison stories? Anyway, we have a lot of breaks today. We have a lot of great sponsors. We'll be right back with Spikes Car Radio. Let me tell you something. Did you know most people have no idea whether or not the motor oil they're using is good enough to protect their engine? Everybody's driving around not even caring about what's going on under the hood. 
Only one brand literally goes the extra mile to test everything, including ensuring they're the right motor oil for your car. And I'm talking about Valvoline. That's right, Valvoline is the only motor oil brand in the world with an engine lab completely dedicated to testing motor oil. Valvoline takes their products and their competitors, I might add, and runs them through the gauntlet. I'm talking thousands of miles. Then the engineers and technicians take those engines apart to evaluate exactly what happened. Please don't try this at home. Trust that Valvoline has done it for you. Was there carbon buildup? How did the seals hold up? Did the engine perform like it was supposed to? And most importantly, were the critical engine components protected? You don't know, but Valvoline does. So when Valvoline is formulating motor oil for your engine, they know exactly how it performs and what protects it best because they've seen the results firsthand. It's why I trust Valvoline in my car and it's why Valvoline has been trusted for more than 150 years. Head over to Valvoline.com slash spike to see what product is right for your engine. That's Valvoline.com slash spike. You're listening to Spike's Car Radio. All right, here we are back with more car stories embarrassing car stories gentlemen here's uh i don't know if this is really embarrassing but i thought it was kind of funny from touring dad uh winter road trip to lake tahoe my girlfriend of the time decided she needed to pee we were stuck in a tail of traffic in a mountain pass i told her to get out and pee between our car and the car in front so you, you, you yeah, see between, the image? In between yeah, the cars, There's yes. cars uh, stacked up there. I told her to get out and pee in front of the car. I'd blow the horn if there was an issue. <laughs> she had her pants halfway <laughs> down in a full squat, and I seized the opportunity to blow the horn, well, just because. <laughs> she, of course, startled, stood up, and peed all over her pants and my car. She was mad as hell. We never married. What's embarrassing about that? <laughs> there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing embarrassing about it. It's dodging a bullet. Yeah. 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 Listen, if she can't take a joke where the end of that joke is her pissing all over herself and you, maybe she's not the one. I don't think I could... You, you understand what I'm saying? They're saying car to car and stop and go traffic, and she's peeing between the bumpers. I that's, could. That's too much pressure for me. I don't think I could be in that situation. I mean, if you can. Oh, you, you can, can chuck off driving at 75 miles someone, an hour. Someone brought that up as embarrassing, and I said, this is not embarrassing. It's inspiring. You should. <laughs> it's an inspiring story yeah. as told. I did not tell that story in shame. I was bragging. Well, how, do you feel about, <laughs> how do you feel about pissing while driving? <clears throat> I don't like that. I think that's gross. And sorry, you do that all the time. Not driving? all the time. P- pissing. pissing. He's while saying driving? the word. you got to make some time. <clears throat> you're on the freeway. You get a jog. It's all about the receptacle. If you've got a good receptacle, then, yeah. you're, then you're okay. You're right. right. Well, yeah, but. Yeah, but what? <laughs> what is it? A fruit juice? Like a hotel fruit juice opening? That's what I would need. Something big. Yeah, you need, you need a, oh. wide mouth, a wide mouth <laughs> bottle. <laughs> like a Mickey's. This little, this little <laughs> mini it's Pellegrino more, it's, could be hard. It's not just about my huge crank. It's also about, <laughs> I don't want to spill in a car. Look, it's I, math. I, it's I don't rates. want uh, pee to get everywhere. Right? Don't you worry about that? I'm very capable at this. So you've done this a lot. So tell yeah, us I your method. I say a lot. Ferris. All right. Well, well share that. with us how you do it. You're well, driving along. You're in you motion. you got a bottle. And you're in the, you get in the fast lane, so you're going nice and fast. Okay. And, <laughs> yeah. And you get the bottle, you put the hose in the bottle, and you let it go. <laughs> and and then you make sure that what? you get it all So is this out. the iced tea bottles that you yes, leave in our Arizona, cars? Arizona. But look, okay, look. Not there, that bottle. There's you can't unsweet- do that. There's <laughs> unsweetened tea no, right no, no, here. Look over there at the honest teas and the kombuchas. <laughs> okay. Those are the ones that you can do it with. Okay. And so, so I tell you, you, I, you I put your pole ha- across the top, but if it... Seals? No, you you don't it's, seal. You've got you've got to get a little angle on, and you got to make sure that there's no crimp in the hose. Because if there's a crimp in the hose, what oh, happens no. is when you then, right, then release. You put it back in, you, you put it back in the pants. Then you're going to get a, a spray. So you just got to be careful, Ferriston. You can't be your typical sloppy pissing self. And then you put the cap back on. Yes, and then you deposit it. That's disgusting. Uh, in the recycle bin for, <laughs> for some lucky fellow. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> there are t- way too many of those on the side of the road. The Urine bombs, they call them. It's unbelievable. <laughs> that's what happens if you got a DUI. You have to go out and pick up the urine bombs. Yeah, that's yep. right. All right, here we go. Have you ever worked on the side of the highway no. after being arrested? No, thankfully. No, me neither. No, I'll, no. I'll, I'll, no. I'll, I'll, no. All right, who is Julian says, once uh, I put in eight quarts of motor oil into my car, 
because the dis- dipstick was ATF. Ooh. What is ATF? Or oh, a tranny fluid. fluid? <laughs> <laughs> put it in a tranny. <laughs> not the not the worst wow. thing in the world. <clears throat> Wow. Embarrassing, but it's it's not it doesn't break uh, I anything. Think, I think wow! If you figure it out before you drive the car, you might be okay. Yeah. Maybe. Wow! What happens? Yes, it overflows and it drips out. And well, the tranny runs you, hotter and needs more viscosity, right? If you fill your transmission with motor oil, that's what is that what he said? No. Sounds like he filled his transmission yes. with motor oil. Oh yeah, he a, did. Yeah. Yes. I would, I think you just drain it out pretty thoroughly and you might be okay. I think. Yeah. I, th- I don't know. No. I've never done that. If, you, that's if terrible. you drove your car with that in too long, your tranny would get too hot, and then it would it would seize up, break, melt. Yeah. I think if you save the transmission there, you're okay. <clears throat> I've certainly broken plenty of little pieces on all of my old cars trying to fix stuff myself or install stuff myself. I've never that's put the hard. wrong fluid into the wrong spot, though. The 72 Porsche oil filler yeah. spot. Or where's, diesel and petrol. Where's the seventy-two Porsche oil up. filler? That was a one-year only. It's all. It's on the rear uh, passenger quarter panel, and it looks like a gas filler. Oh. And so people or, or or gas monkeys, gas jockeys, would pump gas <laughs> would into pump the gas oil. Into <laughs> oh, yeah. good lord! Yeah, I all can right. see why that was one year only. <laughs> ben said, uh, "I was trying to impress a girl in a 1998 Viper GTSR. Nice. She was not in it." Is he saying he was in it? He wasn't trying to impress the girl in the Viper. Right. So he was in the Viper. It was on the original Michelin Pilot Sports from 1998, and the year was 2013. Oh, God. Merged onto the PCH in San Luis Obispo and promptly spun the car. Mm-hmm. She immediately asked to be taken home. Yeah. That's, uh, that's embarrassing. Yeah. Well, Have you ever spun a car? I've spun a bunch of cars. Mo- notably... My brand new 98 C2S coming home from uh, Seinfeld late one night on wet roads on Laurel Canyon and thinking, let me try some of these traction controls and grip things in this rain. I bet that will keep the car from spinning. And as I came through a little turn, I got on it to see what would happen. And guess what I did? (laughs) I did a full spin front to back to front. Luckily, ended up going straight down in the middle of the night. Nice. A terrifying moment. It was the second time I had done something like that. The first time was in a Honda Accord in 11th grade when I pulled the emergency brake to see what would happen. <laughs> and my brother and I did a full spin yeah. and luckily did not hit <laughs> did not hit the oncoming Mack truck that was coming in oncoming traffic. But, boy, I understand that one. I That's spun rough. Uh, my, that Mustang. I did the big burnout. From, yeah. Uh, I spun that in the middle of the, in the winter. Cold roads, not snowy, but on an exit ramp. Very cold. Yeah. I looped it, got very lucky, didn't hit the guardrail, sold it maybe two or three <laughs> days later, and the guy I sold it to totaled it the very next day. How many times have we all crashed? I've crashed a bunch of cars. I've crashed three times, <laughs> all of which were on racetracks. Right. And all of which were in the wet. So wet racetracks for me. Were you in the car with me, uh, car of the year, when I was in the Corvette? And the one thing they said to us was, "Don't run over the airplane." I wasn't in lights. the car. I was. I was watching from the sidelines, and boy, was that great! <laughs> it was fun, right? They I was were really on loving the runway, and they had these those landing lights. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're like a foot tall. Yeah. And I don't know how much they cost, but they are expensive. <laughs> and they said the one thing you guys cannot do is break the airport lights. And guess what I did? Guess what Spike did? And I got out of that car, and I took the light, and I just planted it back in the ground. (laughs) Not broken. That was so much fun because you and I, I remember you and I in that Volvo XC90. Oh, yeah. And and I was afraid to push it. And you were like, keep pushing it, keep pushing it. It'll be great if it tips over. And I was like, it's not great for me. But it really, I think about that. Just yesterday when I was in my Range Rover Sport, kind of in some twisty turns, going, the Matt Farah moment. This thing is not going to flip. No, the Range Rovers are good. The yeah. Range Rover Sport's got good, good, good yes. stability, good handling. But you really pushed me past my comfort zone. And, oh, and good. Now I can speed comfortably <laughs> yes. in my SUVs. 
<laughs> as long as you're on that level of adhesion, you're good. <clears throat> yeah. What about you, Zuckerman? You've crashed. Every crash is embarrassing you in know, its heart, I, right? I, okay. One time was my fault. I, I rear-ended a guy on an on-ramp. I anticipated he was going to enter traffic. And so I just depend on that. And I was looking over my left shoulder, and I floored it. And I <laughs> hit this fucking sucker hard. <laughs> but bam, he was in a pickup. I was in a, I had a Dodge Ram, like a 96, and I crashed. Him. Um, oh, and uh, over the shoulder check. Yeah, and he was, and he wasn't too happy. But other than that, that was the only at fault I've had in my entire uh, career. But I've been, you know, I've been bashed into. Uh, Aren't you uh, embarrassed any time your car gets damaged, even if it's not your fault? I am. I'm not embarrassed. I get angry. Yeah. I'm, I'm more. It was more of an angry yeah, reaction. Angry. Right. I, like, what right. the fuck are you stupid? What did you? Why? What are you doing? Yeah. I then directed it myself eventually. Really? Yeah. Really? Why did I go? Why did I even get there? Why did I slow down? What did I do? I uh, should have known. Oh, your I mind should be is, psychic. Yeah. yeah I blame yeah. myself. Why did I, I, why I, why I, did I get, get out of bed? Why did I get born? Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's silly. I silly get embarrassed thing. if my car breaks down and I'm stuck on the side of the road oh, and it's yeah. a cool car. Like the one time the Countach let me down and I sat yeah. on the side of the road for an hour and a half. People just wanted to <clears throat> stop and look at the car, and and it feels and bad. they just want to talk about the car, right? And you're cooking in the sun, yes. and annoyed because I was supposed to be here. Bill's getting a sandwich, and instead I'm sitting on the side of the fucking road. And my people want to talk red to you. You feel stupid, and everyone, yeah, and yes. you feel really dumb. What, That's what, why we're talking. About what about this. what about gas tank jousting? When you're like, I bet I can go another. You, oh, you're, no. you're, you know, <laughs> and I've, I've I, never I, lost. If you lost one oh, of those, yeah. I've never actually. I've I've actually, really, I've lost them. <laughs> I, I've lost them a couple of times. Yeah. I'm convinced I can get one more exit. And what is it about that kind of w- gambling? Why do you want to try to make it as far no, as you if can? You, I think if we really sat down and we really had the time to do this, each of us could write 100 pages of these embarrassing stories. Yeah. Like, as you're just talking, I'm thinking about the time that Jerry gets his IROC, his 74 IROC 911, back from Resto, Calls up and he goes, let's take it for a drive. I run down to Santa Monica. The two of us pull out and we smell this smell. And I'm like, oh, my God, you can still smell the paint. It's amazing. And none of us are thinking about what I just said. Why would the paint be wet and why would it smell? Because that's not what we're smelling. What we're smelling is gasoline squirting on the engine as we're warming the car up. And we go, that smells really strong. Should we drive? And he go, yeah, let's drive. And we start driving. That car that sold for $2.3 million. Almost burned up. And then I said, you know what? Let's just stop and just look at the engine. Because I don't know, that kind of smelling like gas now. We open the deck lid and it's just like a shower it's just spraying on top of the hot engine can That's you imagine crazy. what would have happened to us Unbelievable. That's embarrassing but yeah. we kept it quiet up until now <laughs> we kept it quiet because we were too embarrassed yeah it was how much did that car sell for Two point three. Yikes. Two point three. What I just heard you say, by the way, because you you know you guys are you guys obviously both knew the car you were talking about. And now that I think about it, I remember the IROC nine eleven yellow one. But when you said when Jerry got his IROC, I the went of a Camaro. I'm going yeehaw, <laughs> motherfucker! So what are we doing? That would be great. No, he he's got that midget right that That's he's his, all excited yeah, about. Yeah, he's, he's in been a midget his, phase, right? and he's promised everybody that he's going to come on and. He's going to do, he and I are going to go drive in it, and he's just going to review it for an hour. We will get that done. The car is in, uh, out in the Hamptons now, so I don't know how we're going to do that. And then he's, he's got a great tale to tell soon that is going to blow up. You know, all I was just minds. watching, uh, I've, I've run out of Netflix, basically, and I was watching on the, on the elliptical machine some old comedians in cars getting coffee. And I was watching the, the Will Ferrell episode. Yeah. They go to a place that's like 100 yards from my house. And it doesn't matter. No one's in my house. But they make a comment. They get really bad service there. <laughs> they make a comment like, Jerry's like, I don't understand the business model of this <laughs> they, were, they were talking about being in Greece. And he's like, this is Greece. There, there is no discernible business model or service. And yeah. yet this place will still be here tomorrow. That's and hilarious. And I, I laughed because I, I went back and looked at the date of when that episode aired. That place actually went on a business like three weeks after Oh, that, wow. That's oh, great. so funny. All right, here we go. Let's do some more embarrassing. What's, uh, what's in the parking lot right now? It's a heavy stories. hitting day here at Bill's. <clears throat> heavy hitters. 
Heavy hitters. C sixty three Mercedes. There's a Ford Falcon. Bunch of Porsches. All right. Uh, Haffler Man. One cold Colorado morning back in the 90s. I decided to take my 88 Lotus Esprit to work, backed it out of the garage to warm it up for a few minutes. The girlfriend yelled at me that I had a phone call inside. I left the Lotus running in the driveway during my call. What should have been a two-minute conversation lasted longer. Mid-call, I could smell something burning. Looked outside to find the Lotus on fire, <laughs> billowing thick black smoke all over the place. Suffice it to say, I did not drive the Esprit to work that day. Well, a wonderful all right. outcome. Letting That's a car fun. idle for half an hour shouldn't make you catch, catch, on, catch, fire, make right? catch on fire. No, it's truly it's embarrassing all over the place. This story. Not only, I mean, I, I think you were spared, right? I mean, if that happened while you were driving it. That sounds like there's an electrical, an electrical yeah. issue that needed to be worked out. But but in one short well, paragraph survived. of a story, now we know why you don't buy British cars. <laughs> I mean, I want, that's a perfect. Can I tell you? Have you guys seen Framing John DeLorean yet on mm, Amazon heard, Prime with yeah. with Alec Baldwin? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, my yeah. god! I watch what a tonight. story! Oh, huh? good. forget the Colin story. Colin Chapman, the whole work. What an absurd film! This film is part documentary footage amazing yep. period footage with interviews and then reenactments with Alec Baldwin playing John DeLorean and then behind the scenes reenactments of Alec Baldwin as Alec Baldwin but dressed as John DeLorean just giving some of his thoughts on the side all meshed into one movie wow. it is a disaster of filmmaking <laughs> that the- <laughs> it's a disaster of oh filmmaking? my god it's, it's not horrible. good no you watch from oh, minute no, one until the it. end you go <clears throat> guys you need to pick a genre of what you're trying to do here it's Th- crazy that little there's that little hotel right in brentwood at uh sunset and kenter and bundy yeah that's where they busted them Yep. Every time I drive by it, we're headed out better here. Better than gold. Yeah, yeah. Better, better than gold. gold. Better yeah. than gold. But it's uh, amazing. The, it's it's the I, I actually recommend seeing it just because you'll be the whole time you'll be like, what am I even watching? You Play know what we're that. watching? We're watching the mechanism. Fantastic. Zuckerman and I. This Brazilian money laundering drama. And the mechanism. It's in Portuguese, <laughs> so you turn it down low and you just read the subtitle. Watch fantastic. the mechanism. It's fantastic. Oh, mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. Mechanism. <laughs> mechanism. It's fantastic. We, they're crazy cars. There's crazy architecture. Weird fashion. It's a good story, and it's can half I, true. Can I ask Zuckerman a little legal question, real quick? Not personal. On the air. Great or good. Sure. Great or good. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Let's you go. See, what do you got? Florida. They just passed a bill allowing for unmanned autonomous vehicle testing on the roads. Well, unmanned. Wow. You know, no babysitter. Well, what do you think about it from a liability perspective? <clears throat> well, I would have to read the He's law. He's smiling. If, it's if, a dream come true. It, it is. Because <laughs> if, if, as long if the law then says that they're going to allow testing and the manufacturer shall have limited liability or no liability, I'd be against it. But if it says, okay, test and and these, uh, then, then the manufacturer is responsible, and they're going to fucking pay. These, I, we're not ready for this. I think, as, I think, as a litigatory, if that's a word, a litigator, li- like no, no, like our society yeah, of suing society. each litigious, that's the word of suing each other. I don't, I don't. How many people are going to want to take financial responsibility for what their unmanned vehicle does without their presence? Well, you know, everyone has a tendency to deny fault. In fact, we, we nobody's ever at fault. Even when <laughs> you rear end somebody, it's always the other guy's fault. That's my experience in right. the law. And when you start to bring in technology, autonomy. Always the car is going to be a fault. We the have computer to do did something wrong. I want to do a whole show on this. I want to get yes. Matt Fair. I want to get Alex Roy. I want yeah. to get the whole group together, and I want to talk. Because I, I follow you guys on Twitter, and I'm reading what you're doing. And you're, you're so funny with it, and there's so much confusion as to what a self-driving car really means. Yeah. That it's a whole episode. The Let's term not get, full self-driving is it's binary. Good. It means full. Yeah, yeah. It means you it's take good. a nap. It doesn't mean 90% of the time. We'll get into it. I'm going to tell you one little story. A friend of mine, a guy I know, was driving his Tesla on autopilot mode, 
and he was reading a book while this was happening, and then he and then he got in an accident. Yeah. And he then said that the car was defective. Fast forward, now that the car is repaired, he can't get it insured because <laughs> the car because is defective. Because he alleged it was defective. So now he's stuck with a car he can't oh, insure. That's oh, great. that's so funny. That's so I, good. <laughs> oh, that's tasty. That guy, that guy lawyered himself Dumb. out of a car. <laughs> <laughs> but see, the Tesla... That guy's name is Howie no, Mandel. But, here, but the problem is the Tesla what? freaks on Twitter will say both that, you're, that your friend, he was irresponsible sure. because they tell you not to do that. Meanwhile, on the forums, they brag about how long they can go without right, and right. how they can cheat the system. So and they crazy. put an orange on the steering wheel and it thinks your hands are on it or you tape a water bottle. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, it's, right. it's both, they play both sides of that. Wow. So anyway, that's going to be a big episode. But that's hilarious that he lawyered himself out of a car. It's the greatest. (laughs) It's so satisfying. All right, let's do one more before we got to take another commercial break. In the first car I ever bought, says Dirty Harry, the fuel gauge wasn't the most accurate. So one day I thought I could push it a little farther and get gas on the other side of town. Just what we were talking about, Zuckerman. And I was crossing one of only two bridges crossing the Habor. (laughs) H A R B O U R. Is that Harbour. British? The Harbour. My car ran out of gas. I ended up being the reason for the day's massive traffic jam. <laughs> I had to sit in my car as people glared at me while they tried to squeeze by. Even listen to the local radio station reporting about me and my car creating a massive traffic jam. Well I, done. I would have taken my boom box and stood on that car and just <laughs> went, yeah, babe. I would have gone with it, right? This is me. This is oh, my man. day. Why do we wait? Why do we wait? We think it's not going to happen. What? <clears throat> here's a good question for you, Matt Ferrer, the, the man who knows everything about cars. When you're down below that last like quarter hash mark, how much gas is, is generally there? Because it's oh, always dude, it, the tiniest w- one. It varies so much I, from like I know car it, I, to car. Right. I know in modern cars it'll say, like, you got 59 miles yeah. left. But in the older cars, are I you... I mean, re- even in a modern car, like, I did a thing for with, with um, a Mercedes mm-hmm. for a, a bit for, uh, uh, I think it was Drive on NBC Sports, where I, I tried to drive a Mercedes diesel from Mexico to Oregon, mm-hmm. the whole tank of gas, <laughs> or a whole, the whole state on one tank of fuel. And so I, I was either going to cross that Oregon line or I was going to run the car dry. Right. And Mercedes knew I was going to run the car dry. Like, they were okay with it. And I got down to an indicated zero miles to empty, and I drove for 40 miles on, on a on. digital gauge that showed zero to empty. Wow. And I, I actually I, I, I died, like, I think it was like 17 miles from the Oregon border. It was a worst-case scenario because I didn't yeah, make yeah. it. I got real close. But I was so excited for it to run out because I had to pee so bad, <laughs> and it just kept going and going. You and didn't going. want to use Zuckerman's bottle method. I didn't use the bottle. <laughs> I was on television. Couldn't do it. The peninsulator. You can do it. We can edit it out. But uh, I went 867 miles on a tank of diesel. It's pretty Brutal. impressive that there were 40 miles there when it was reading zero. It was reading That's zero, and there were 40 miles. Yeah. What I, about I, when it says on these on, on these modern cars? It'll tell you. 20 miles till empty, 19, 18, and then it just goes to zero. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> or That's just what says I like. low. It oh, yeah. just says low when you need those last few bits of information. On my 66 Triumph, I have a little reserve uh, pet cock. On that Speedster, I've got a little reserve tank. I, I think the reserve should come back. I, I like, like the that. reserve. The reserve was good. It makes, oh, yeah. It, yeah, it's comforting, right? So, yeah. Did I tell you about the wonkiness in the Lambo fuel tanks? I learned a fun thing about yes. this car. I would always fill it up with gas. Right. You know, Fill up, it would, no problem, right? And it, the needle would indicate full. And then I'd drive it for like 15 minutes, and it would go back to like half. But then it would come up a little bit and go. And I figured the gauge was on the fritz, right? Just, you know, add it to the list, whatever. It's for the next service, right? And then I learned that these cars originally had dual fuel fillers, one on each side. It still has dual fuel tanks with some little wonky crossover <laughs> pipe in between. So a pedestrian when, bridge. So you got exactly, so you got to fill up the one side <laughs> and then sit there for ten minutes while uh, yeah, it yeah, equalizes yeah. and then you fill it up the rest of the way. 
This is these are this is an Italian supercar. This is not it. a problem with the equal, car. <laughs> equal car, equal parts when genius and retardation. It's designed to give you time to have an espresso <laughs> while you racist towards <laughs> Italians, Zuckerman. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna take a break. We'll be right back with more Spike's Car Radio embarrassing car stories. Think of all the weird things you find in cars. I'm not talking about your garden variety petrified French fries or melted crayons. I'm not talking about Moise's groceries in the front boot of my GT2 RS. I'm talking about live snakes, bizarre trinkets, the kind of stuff that just makes you wonder about folks. Actually, Moise's groceries made me wonder about him. Weird vegetables I'd never seen before. Another thing that will make you wonder, but in a good way, are Continental Belts. Bet you didn't know they're OE in tens of millions of Chrysler, Dodge, and Ford GM vehicles that roll off the assembly line. They're also OE on the majority of BMWs and VWs. Now, Continental is launching the aftermarket multi-V belt with the OE pedigree. It's the OE Technology Series. Belts that are fanatically engineered for perfect fit, form, and function. And Continental has an OE Technology Series multi-V belt for 98% of vehicles on the road in the U.S. and Canada. Hey, you get enough surprises when you work on cars and trucks. A belt should not be one of them. Go to the Continental OE Technology Series Multi-V Belt, the belt with the OE pedigree. To get the full story, visit OETechnologySeries.com. You're listening to Spike's Car Radio. All right, welcome back, everybody. Yeah, I know. We have a lot of breaks, uh, Farrah. I've got to take three this show, but I uh, but we'll give them extra content. And then I, I promise next time I'm in uh, Beverly Hills, I'll ask them why there's so many ads. <laughs> I wish I paid closer attention to this podcast, but this is the only part I pay attention to. Hanging right. out with you guys. You, you're you the content guy. You're not I should probably have a guy. website. You probably Look, should. we have hats finally. Like Bill made us some hats. They're like going to sell them here at the Malibu Kitchen. You want a hat? Did you say you Bill, come here. Bill made you hats? <laughs> Bill made the hats. <laughs> I was, uh, I don't remember. I was in at an event and I looked at, I turned on my Instagram and I saw a Spikes Car Radio hat. I went, what the hell is that? <laughs> Bill has decided on his own to make and sell hats here, which cool. I've given my blessing. We've designed them. They say uh, Spikes Car Radio on the front and on the back. Oh, the money. The money. The money. So I, uh, if you want those, the only place to get them will be Bill's. You come in here. He will sell them to you. I got a tuna but sandwich. Wait, the, uh, the shirt merch, as you sell, is going to be sold through uh, Blipshift. We have a new shirt coming out any minute. I'm going to announce it on the show. I think I'm getting the prototype. It's just in time for the Monterey Car Auction Week. I think you will all relate to it. Um, and I promise you, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to keep selling uh, merch. I, I feel bad. How about I don't want to keep just taking money from listeners. I, I want to I like I do a special okay. one People of want one second. A second. thing to support. They What's do. That? They want a thing to support. You sure? Yeah. People are happy. I sell them merch. They're not. They don't see it as me hawking shit. They think of it as me well, giving them a thing to buy to support. I understand the hats because I I want to wear. It. Hey, look, there's some hats for sale up there. <laughs> I just oh, noticed. Yes. Look, we, we gotta get some smoke <laughs> guitar hats. Do you bitch. think Zuckerman? You know Bill very well, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna pay for these hats and they're gonna be sold through here. Do you think I'll see any of that money? No, it's yeah, a charitable. You should try and get a charitable <laughs> deduction <laughs> receipt at the very <laughs> so, <I'm just, laughs> so I'm going to be paying thousands of dollars for nothing for Bill to make money on yeah, my hat. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, good. I just want right. to be clear on it. Anyway, there's right. one product I want to do: a special edition Spikes Car Radio Road Rage Fungo Bat. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> now, for menacing what, people. What if? someone actually hurt someone with it are we liable no, or not it's not our problem it's Wait, not our problem uh, legal question if you're brandishing a bat but you're on your property and the person you're screaming at is on public is that legal yeah great okay just needed to know that as long as you're not saying anything just brandish it don't say a word did okay. you do that okay. no i but i but i i know i see where the world is going right and i just want to know when when it hits what i can do let the bat speak for itself don't say don't scream any don't say i'm gonna kill you yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gonna, just, gonna, just hold gonna, it i'm gonna crash you gonna clobber you on the head crack your skull don't say that just hold it okay i'm putting a pitch together about neighborhood wars that i will talk to you about after the show but it's i just precisely wanna, because i i feel like we've lost our way I that want to roll out a neighbors. spike strip for huh? everybody that drives the wrong way down yes. my one-way street, yeah. which is basically everybody. How about the speeders in your neighborhood? I mean, everybody has these drivers and these people. Zuckerman and I went down a road with a, with a lady on my street who's a huge pain in the ass who's uh, being really dangerous. But mine Very are dangerous. tourists, and that's why they deserve the spike strip. Mm. 
tourists here too. They're back here in Malibu. Just remember, stay to the right if you're listening. No U-turns. Stay to the right and no U-turns. Stay to the right. The left lane is for us to drive by you quickly. Do yes. not slow us down. All right, let's get back to embarrassing stories. Here's one I think we've Jesus. read about, we can all relate to. We've heard a version of this. Maybe we've done it, maybe we haven't. My first Ferrari got delivered. Didn't know the starting procedure. Very nice. So I guess here's what he's saying. He's not filling in, but this is Mr. Primitivo. As the car is being unloaded off the truck, a small crowd has gathered, and he did not know how to drive it. <laughs> the truck driver... Under his breath, leaned in and told him everything he needed to know. Okay. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. Yeah. But everybody picked up on what he was doing. <laughs> so that's he was okay. still embarrassed. I think that's okay, right? It's okay. Right. I'm surprised we that's have not, not the end of the world. You get a brand new car. You don't know how to use it. Right. So All right. There was a guy. Do you know that dude, uh, Manny Coastbin? You heard of that guy? He's like a self-made guy. He's got a lot of crazy cars down in Orange County. Bugattis and <laughs> zigs and shit. He had, uh, we were at this Cars and Copters thing, and his Senna, like, wouldn't go into gear. And I had to tell him, like, the hard restart procedure for his Senna to get it to go into gear in front of a massive crowd oh, of people. Yeah. But that it happens. Worked. Yeah, it worked. I remember, Zuckerman, the first time I drove your 911R right here in the parking lot. Right. Remember how the gear slips into three instead of one? And you stall. I, and yeah. I stalled in front of a bunch of guys. I was who pretty knew, embarrassed. Who we were, yeah. Yeah, right, well, try right. That, try driving a Carrera GT the first oh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Traffic. Well, that's right. understandable, yeah. Gear. Yeah. My yeah. 911 with its really funky lightweight flywheel and right. clutch and the can when it's cold it idles like shit and constantly stalls. This and is it's good. Really embarrassing if you do that. You know what I feel like people. we're doing? I feel like we're doing stars without their makeup. Yeah. That right. we're empowering the car world to come out and tell your truths. Right? Oh my god, you want another <laughs> Here's an embarrassing one. My Corvette. Remember my Corvette? Yes. When we met my red C5 Corvette. So I had that car since I was very young. At one point I was driving it and someone cut across one lane road each way and someone cut across to turn left you know across me mm -hmm. and they shouldn't have and they basically ripped off half of my front bumper on that car <laughs> now i was the car was still drivable <clears throat> and i was only about i don't know three or four miles from the place where i would get it worked on and i just decided i'm gonna have to, to drive it there but to do that i had to drive it pass right through the middle of my town and it had a loud exhaust on it you know and at the time that th this was something that was really embarrassing to me driving a, a damaged car through yeah. town you know and i and i i i, I put those <laughs> up you know and i put, pulled my hat down and i creeped this loudly idling corvette with half a front Half a front end through town <laughs> just to the shop, just in shame. Yes. Shame. <laughs> shame. The walk of shame. Yeah. Here's a good one. RSB RS, RS Brins. I ran over an already dead deer in Vermont going <laughs> 60 miles an hour because it was dark and I didn't see it. My white Jetta was red after and it smelled like deer carcass. Oh. I then helped a local pick up the deer and try and move it, and when I picked it up, <laughs> the hind legs fell off. An early zombie oh, God. story. <laughs> God, that's horrifying. That's a horrific story. Paul uh, Dury reached for what I thought. Uh, I reached for what I thought was the fuel injector cleaner and poured it into my fuel tank. I reached for the fuel injector cleaner and poured it into my fuel. To my dismay, I realized I had accidentally poured in motor oil additive. Ooh. I desperately topped off the fuel tank every day for about two weeks, thinking I could dilute that gunk. Reality caught up to me, <laughs> and the high-pressure fuel pump failed. Yeah. I had to replace that and pull out the, and clean the fuel tank. Oh, my wow, God. That is really embarrassing, Paul, but thank you for sharing that. Dave Steph Taylor said, I had a bad alignment. I drove to the shop down the street about two miles away trying to keep the car straight. An officer saw me and thought I was drunk. Wow, that's a really bad alignment. Officer, Jeez. you don't understand. He pulled me over, and uh, once he saw I was not drunk and I confirmed I had an appointment to get it fixed, he escorted me the rest of the way. Well, that's nice. Wow. But imagine how your alignment is that how bad, bad it that is. you're <laughs> weaving. That's not Somebody a bad up. alignment. Yeah, jeez. I mean, I don't even understand that. I've always wondered what arguments you could use 
to justify like really bad driving on the street. You know, my wife's about to have a baby right. or you know, there's some kind of a medical emergency or or whatever. Or ba- battle line. Like I always Zuckerman. thought about uh, bedding in brake pads. You know, because <laughs> you gotta like go thirty stop, yes. forty stop, fifty. Officer, I'm uh, I'm betting in my brake pads I, from I, 120. I tried. I was cleaning my carburetor's a little gunked up. Yeah, that's in a, a good 68 one. 68 race car, and uh, no, it didn't. It doesn't work. I got pulled over in the Countach <laughs> coming back from Orange <laughs> yeah. County, and it, it, there was really bad traffic, mm-hmm. and I was I was driving in the carpool lane by myself, and I didn't. I did. I felt like a dick doing it. I realized I was a dick for doing it. You're allowed to. I, well, I am not because I got pulled over. And he it's goes, not a moving Dude, violation. You're driving a red Lamborghini, and with a t- I can clearly see you're by yourself. He's like, I had to pull you over just to keep up appearances, if nothing yeah. else. And I told him that the, the car was would overheat and catch on fire if I didn't keep it moving, and which was a lie. But you know, he did, did not work? ticket me. No, he didn't ticket me. But he said he had to pull me over because otherwise the people around me would have seen him let me go in my. I, I heard a story uh, in the legal world. It was not a client of mine, so I'm going to tell this story. A guy was pulled over for driving, weaving, not staying within the lines, and he would not take a breathalyzer or a blood test. And later on, he tried to defend his poor driving by saying it was a butt plug in his ass. <laughs> and that's why. And, and he took that in front of the jury unsuccessfully. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm Can real, you produce said butt plug? <laughs> I'm cannot, really going to go for it this time, guys. <laughs> I have it right here. <laughs> Exhibit A, please pass it along to each jury. No. <laughs> That's unbelievable. But it's just weird enough to work. Um, True story. Do those RTB, kinds of lunatic defenses ever really work? I mean, you just read like about the lottery some stuff does, like so people want to do it. People want to get away with it, and uh, ultimately, it it might if you get the right jury in the right time in the right place, you might get lucky. Yeah. RTB <laughs> eighty seven is outing his sister, not himself. My sister. Once lost her BMW X5 in Manhattan. <laughs> she drove it in and forgot she drove it in and then just took the train back to the burbs. That's hilarious. That is, awesome. <laughs> that is really embarrassing. I mean, if you forget where it is then as well, and that's really... So what did she do? She drove and she forgot? That, I can see that if you take the train every day in. I used to do that. And then one day you take your car and yeah. you just, you know, you're not thinking at all the bad things that went wrong. You get I mean, autopilot it. Right. Think about right. how often you're going from, instead of, you know, from your house to point A and then back to your house, how often there's going to be a point B there, but you forget and just autopilot yourself towards your house yeah. for a little bit. You get yeah. halfway home and you go, oh, God, I was supposed to be in wherever. All right. Here's another one. Here's another one that I've done wrong. And uh, I just thought of it. And maybe you guys have done this, too. You know on the little chargers, when you store your cars, you have a little trickle charger, right? right? And on the older ones, it has a little switch, 12-volt or 6-volt. Yes, correct. I once 6-volted a 12-volt, came back two weeks later to drive the car. And? Batteries completely Fried. dead. Fried. Yeah, gone. Really? I was able to charge it up for a little while, but then had to replace the battery. And even now, even as recently as yesterday, I was down there. I make sure that is on the 12. <laughs> I make sure it's on the 12. You know what else? I used to use those old trickle chargers on modern GT3s. Yeah. And that would burn up the that, battery. No, yeah, yeah, guys. There's still people doing that, by the way. I just... Uh, you need to get the Porsche-branded, computer-chip-managed trickle charger for your modern Porsches. Otherwise, you're screwed. I got a Do shout out that. to SeaTech. They sent me uh, two new trickle chargers great. for my old cars. Yeah, uh, I put the one on the on the Countach, and it yeah. actually is quite nice. Yeah, and the like the big box thing, my old charger that came with the car, and yeah. no cell was there. That whole box that's part of the charging unit was in the car, and you just plug a thing yeah, into yeah, the wall. Yeah. Awesome. Now it's all out of the car, and just the little cable goes into the that's car. That's good. Nice. Will SeaTech send us some? We'll try them out. That's nice. Here, here's another good one. I still, I don't understand the phraseology here. Because ghost riding for me, like I used to ghost ride bikes, and that meant taking a bike with no rider and pushing it down a hill, and it was ghost riding. Okay? Isn't that yeah. what ghost riding well, is? Well, ghost riding a car is when you idle a car, and then you get out and walk or dance alongside the car 
and then get back in, presumably before it crashes into something. Okay. A lot of this story is not making sense, but it's good. JPKBBQ. Accidentally ghost riding. Accidentally, accidentally ghost riding my parents' 35 foot motor home. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Explain that. He got out with the thing in, in drive. Okay, so oh. he just got out. It was moving. But it says, fortunately, the neighbors were watering their yard. I buried it up to the axle before crashing through my neighbor's <laughs> living room. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I paid for the new flowers, but it could have been worse. I don't think it could have been worse. I mean, he, he, he could have run over a human. Yeah, I guess. That's worse. Wow, that's a whole lot of a mess, that guy. All right, here's one of your... Uh, I had an E30-325i convertible that developed a small hole in the convertible top. The hole became a slit, which propagated over time until one day, at 80 miles an hour, the slit grew from six inches wide to the entire width of the car <laughs> and was flapping uncontrollably. It sounded like a helicopter landed in the car. At exactly 43 miles an hour, the flapping would stop. This became my new top speed until I got it fixed with a series of zip ties. Nice. Says Francis Devlin. I like Francis. that. That's Francis, that was his solution. Zip ties. Very Back good. when I had that Corvette that I was talking about earlier, you know, it had the Targa roof on it. And uh, you, you, <laughs> it, was, it was three latches, one on each side and then one in the middle in the back. And I, was at a, I almost never drove it with the roof on. I liked it with the roof off, so I left the roof in the trunk, as you do. Well, I'm at a car show. It's New Jersey. It starts to rain. I grab the roof, throw it on real quick. Don't think anything about it. Well, I go to leave the car show later, and in my haste, I didn't exactly latch it up. So <clears throat> I'm driving out of the car show, and I get on the New Jersey Turnpike. Oh, no. And I put my foot down, third gear, cross about 65, 70 miles an hour. <laughs> And it just sucked out, <laughs> out about 100 feet up in the air. Wow. And lands, flat lands on the highway and slides, you know, and it lands paint side up. And there's actually some kind of like metally things that it sort of lands on in the sky. And I pull over and I run out and grab it before a car had run it over. And I put it back on the car and it was scratched up on the underside, but the paint was fine. Oh, my <laughs> God. All right. Here's, here's another one. Seinfeld has a custom-built Mercedes. Did I tell you this story already? I don't want to tell the same story. And he calls me up and he goes, I'm tired of it. Do you want it? This is back in the Seinfeld writing days. And I said, send it out to L.A. I'll drive it. But it's essentially a Jerry Seinfeld edition. You open it up and it lights up Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> but it's got a monster motor in it. It's, it's a one of car? a kind. De- no, it's a Mercedes built it because he and I wrote a commercial for them that he appeared in. Okay. And they said, we're going to give you this car. Okay. But we're going to sneak it into the uh, whatever Whatever it was... It was not exactly legal. Okay. Okay? I think. Yeah, yeah. Somehow it gets registered in New York. Yeah. Jerry drives it for a year, says, I'm tired of it. You want it. Send it out. I drive it. The first thing I do is I give it to my guys, and I say, clean it up. And they say, well, what do you want us to do about that registration sticker in the front window there that's kind of obscuring your view? And I stupidly say, remove it. Okay? Not knowing how many backflips and hurdles Jerry had to, to go to to get this car, this car legalized, yeah. okay? I drive the car. I look at the Jerry Seinfeld JSs everywhere, and I go, I can't have This is like buying Scotty Pippen's <laughs> <laughs> you know, basketball mansion in the middle of nowhere. I'm not buying it. And I send the car back, and he, go, he calls me, and he goes, what the hell happened to my inspection sticker? And I go... Oh, yeah, I think I took it off. I'm sorry about that. He, and he's it's the only time Jerry Seinfeld's ever yelled at me. He screamed at me. And I was like, what's the problem here? And he goes, what's the problem? He goes, I can't get this car rich. That car ended up getting crushed. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> because of my stupidity. Like the government took it and yes. crushed it? Wow. Yes. It what, was like, destroyed. And they and Mercedes took it back, and it got destroyed. So and they gave him a new car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and he actually won again because he got a new Mercedes from this car he didn't want to begin can with. You, can you say what type of vehicle it was? It was. Uh, it was just looked like a basic E uh, 350. Just a regular E class, just with custom regular stuff. Regular E class, on it. custom yeah. lowered, bigger engine. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the stats, but it went like hell. So this is so basically. Here's what they did: is they gave him a pre production car. Sometimes they're called dollar cars. They're they're hand built. Sometimes they're press cars, or they're used for media or whatever. Sometimes and a lot of times they go to SEMA. They give the them the tuners. Came, the, well, the motor came from AMG. Right. So they it, took a motor. So they they their pre production hand 
hand built cars and they run them on the M plates before, or they sell them on bill of sale <clears throat> yeah. to tuners. And so he would have had to get some kind of very funky letter from somebody to get this thing registered. This is like I've I, on multiple occasions I've driven press cars and I've tried to buy them physically. Yeah, like yeah. I want it's this hard. one, yeah. sell it to me. me. Too. And they've been like, no, it's pre-production. You can't have it. We have yeah. to crush it. And so they clearly they thought this thing would sort of vanish into Jerry's collection. <laughs> I don't think while. they have to crush these cars. I keep well, they reading can't about sell this. Them. They I can't know, but sell why them. Are, why don't we have a museum of cars? There's just there for would be prototypes. too many. There would just be too many, and most of them aren't but particularly interesting. Aside them. from the VIN numbers, most of them are just normal cars and norm. You yeah, know, I don't know. It's part. Of, it's uh, I've tried. Kind of a I'm like, but you're saving the but the engines and the and they go look. It's just part of building cars. You know, it's just part of the business. So, yeah. It's a bummer. It is. I'm going to take one more break here, and we're going to give you uh, some more content. We'll be right back with Spike's Car Radio. All right, this is a 30-second commercial, and I'm going to throw a lot of numbers at you, but please stay with me. In just 15 minutes, you could save 15% or more on car insurance. This company has been offering great rates and great service for over 75 years. I didn't know that little lizard was over 75 years old. And anytime you need help, you can speak to one of those trained Specialist. And anytime you need help, you can speak to one of their trained specialists 24 7. The company's called Geico. Go to geico.com today. Sorry for all the numbers. And in 54321, we're out of time. You're listening to Spike's Car Radio. Every time, every time we go to the commercials, Zuckerman's got a great story. And you're right, you just brought up another one. You well, didn't tell, and you also didn't tell the story about the guy in the bag. Uh, well, then I'll come right in after the break. I, and by the way, don't you notice that this is a podcast thing? Like whenever, and it, it, it's me too. But whenever you're a guest or you're doing a show, the second you go to break, people start talking and they start telling great stories. Okay. Yeah. Well, guess what? I'm gonna let. I want the listeners to hear two of these stories. That's why you don't actually go to break when you say going to break. You just yeah, that's leave right. Rolling. Well, I have to. Go ahead, Zuckerman. What do you got? Well, I'm gonna tell you. I knew a guy. <laughs> his name was Scott, and Scott would told the most wonderful story it was so foul he was a foul human being like a goat and he said that he had once picked up a gal he was living in new york city they went on a date they went out to long island or something and they were getting back in the city they were on the 59th street bridge and they were stuck in traffic for hours and his stomach was bad and he had to get in the back seat of his caprice he found a burger king bag and he took a crap in the bag (laughs) With a girl, with the girl sitting in the car, oh, no. and then and then he and then he tossed the bag out the window. Look at Bill looking over at us. Eventually, the traffic clears up. He gets her back to her place, <laughs> and she's getting out of the car, and he says, "You're not going to invite me up." <laughs> <laughs> and she says, I never want to see you again. <laughs> You're the most disgusting person. That so is the worst first date, first date story I've ever heard in my yeah, life. That's brutal. Holy crap. That and is horrible. That's like a Farrelly Brothers movie. Yes, you know? the loathsome Farrelly Brothers. Did he say what he did with the bag? He, threw, he... he tossed it out the window oh, good, onto the God. bridge for everyone else. To... Oh, my God. That's yeah. horrible. Uh, horrible. That's much like the story I told you about the banker who wrote that uh, – I forget the book, but he tells a similar yes, story. on the plane. Flying. The investment banker. In turbulence and his stomach, and he has to close a curtain around his little on airplane little plane, seat on the little six With the billionaires. Seater. No, you know, with his clients, and they can see his legs, this and then he unleashes holy hell. Jet, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, and he unleashes holy hell, and it's awful, but uh, it was, yeah, he said he just wrapped a shower curtain around him. Yeah. Can they you can imagine? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his head and his feet. And of course, smell the, the shared everything. airspace. Is God, that's how, on a scale of one to ten, how embarrassing is it to drive off with the gas pump in your car? I've never done it, but I've seen plenty of people do it. To much to my delight, I, I love it. I did that. it once. I did, did it once. I did, I did it, it once. once. Yeah. Yeah. I did it, but I, you know, they have the quick breakaway <laughs> things now. So if you, but now if they you say they're going to charge you. Well, yeah, they well, charge charged you me how when much? I did it. It was like eighty five dollars. No. Yeah. They Be- charge you for a, a, the break to replace the breakaway thing. Go to Beverly Hills, the 76 station, and read what they have written there. $980. Well, Bev- that's the most expensive right, gas station. And then they to a profit center. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and it happened to my wife, too. And they detail all of the costs they say are associated with it. Zuckerman, Fraud. again. 
fraud. You think that's fraud? <laughs> yeah, because I know I've seen the bills as low as 85 and then I saw one for $289 once. It can't be that hard to so, reconnect okay. a hose. No. Zuckerman, let's uh, say it happens to me tomorrow <clears throat> and I'm at that Beverly Hills place and they say, well, it's going to be $1,000. What, how do I go look them I'll in the eye? In what court. do I say to them? I want to see all of the charges you incurred for connecting this, not just they your... They have them on the pump. Just, okay, they have a bill for... They, they send you a bill claiming what the charge is, but how do you know it costs that much? They get somebody out there who charges them five bucks to reconnect Okay, it, so you they itemize all of this for $1,000. So you're saying that's the fraud? Yes. Okay, now here, to back up Zuckerman, Erica did this three years ago. The guy said, you have to give us $1,000. It was on the way down to San Diego. A lawyer happened to be standing there and said something similar to you and said, what are you, you're charging her $1,000 for that. And he goes, that's right. And he went through all the costs. It's going to cost $1,000. We never got billed for it. Of course yeah. not. Yeah, they don't want somebody to challenge them on this. Right. Because then you can turn around and say, how many people have you charged $1,000 <laughs> under false pretenses? So right? you would say that to this guy. Yeah. I'll, say, I'll pay you I want whatever to... you are out of pocket. Whatever you're out of pocket, whatever you're on, out of I want pocket, to, I want to see what you're out of pocket. And then you should. I would also say, what you said. Yeah. Why don't you put all of this in writing? Because you, you yes. need it in writing. Yes. Yeah. I want to see it all in writing. <clears throat> I want to see it all in writing. I want to know exactly how much you're trying to steal from right. me. <laughs> right. <laughs> because I, that's fraud, right? You own a business. That's fraud. That I think just saying that to to a guy who's selling lottery tickets for a living. You'd yes. probably go, get out! <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. $85 seems pretty reasonable to me. I'm going to give you, it's that. out of pocket. I'm going to pay you $100, and this whole thing's going to go you away. You don't even have to replace anything. It's right. a quick, quick decoupler, right? right? So you just literally plug it back Reconnect together. Reconnect it. Well, in the charges, there. I mean, in the itemized thing that I read, it was, we have to get the inspector to come out. He has to expect a, a B, and C. Uh, he has to say this, this, and this. Yeah. But again, inspectors don't charge money. Yeah, if they it's do. City inspectors? Oh, yeah. I got I got a bunch of them right. on the payroll yes. right now. They do. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's that. If that part of it may be true, but you know, that okay. could be a Beverly Hills regulation. I would recommend not ever getting gas in Beverly Hills. By the way, it's like a dollar more expensive a gallon than it is, everywhere which is else two dollars more expensive yeah. in, in, than anywhere else in the country. Yeah. Yes, it's two dollars <laughs> anywhere else in Beverly Hills. Five actually. Yeah. And we have how many refineries right here? They're all broken. It's summertime because <laughs> they're, they're broken. Jay Landers, 1906. I'm driving my mom's mini ba- uh, minivan back to school to pick up my sister. <laughs> Already embarrassing enough. And locked up the brakes on ice, slid through a stop sign, and T-boned one of the teachers in oh, nice. high school, totaling nice. their car. That's not embarrassing. Uh, not That's embarrassing. a wonderful experience. Not embarrassing. Unless you like the teacher. Uh, Brewster Baker's no. What does that mean? The Brewster's Baker's number one fan. Who are the Brewster Bakers? Is that a softball team? Uh the year is 1989. I'm sitting at a stoplight in a big block F-250 next to a Monty SS. Yeah. Put it in neutral and revved it up so he knew my intentions. Light turned green and the Monty was gone in a blaze of smoke. I hit the gas and forgot to put it back in drive and had to wait for the revs wah, to drop wah, enough wah. to put it in gear and slowly drove away from the yes, light. That's, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Could be that's, worse. That's, Could have been in reverse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever done that? No, but I've seen it done, and boy, is it spectacular. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I've, I've done seen it a done little... at the drag strip before. That's when you <clears throat> really, really, yeah. Not yeah. in reverse. Yeah, I've seen someone wow. launch their car at the drag strip in reverse. That's it's hilarious. really incredible to, to see. <laughs> Jay Schaferman says, in high school, I got pulled over in my Volkswagen Scirocco. I always liked those. 16V Wolfsburg edition going 110 in a 55 zone Racing my friend who had a keg in the trunk. This sounds a lot like my childhood. To top it off, the girl in the car was not even the most attractive. What do you look like, Jay? Yeah, even right. the cop had in. to look at <laughs> even the cop had to look at her twice. What does that mean? What does that mean? This is embarrassing for you, Jay, that you're telling this story. He's my really friends still bring it up twenty years later. Of this ugly girl. Yeah. Well, Jay, unless you're a handsome male model. Uh, B T B Tom Chuck. Had an employee put a jug of (laughs) defrost fluid into the diesel tank of my crew truck. Not a good mix. Had to flush the fuel system, replace injectors. Money, money, money. Um, Not so bad. That's not so bad. 
Here's a guy who's saying drove a baby shit green, 20-year-old Pinto for four years while trying to get laid. <laughs> Even if nothing that's bad happens. That's one classic car nut. Yes. Embarrassing, Even not inspiring. Even if nothing bad happens, that's just embarrassing yes. on its own. But you know what? You drive that thing now, and I think you're pretty cool. Yeah. Given all the great cars on Stranger Things and all of these, uh, the retro cool. I just of- saw uh, Jerry driving a, uh, driving a gremlin for a portion of comedians and cars getting coffee before oh, yeah? abandoning it and going to an AMX because it was a shit pile. That's hilarious. Uh, well, here's one. This doesn't seem fair, though. Pulled over for doing 55 and a 54. That's just pathetic. That's, um, a, that's a cop dick I story. I think that's a... That's Dick. a Jay Z line. You was doing fifty five and a fifty four. Oh, it is. It's from ninety nine. Problems. Well, there I just uh, I just earned my white man card right there. <laughs> Mark one collects. At sixteen years old, I managed to lock the keys and the family dog in the car with the engine running. Oh, <laughs> we had to call a locksmith and never did get the smell that Boomer left uh, out of the upholstery. Oh. Well, how long was Boomer in there, dude? That's unbelievable. Longer than the dude on the fifty nine Street Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Scott. Lots of uh, mechanical messes and things putting the wrong things in the wrong car. We've Lots covered of, this topic. Yeah, a lot of old it. stories. Well, I'm not stopping. Oh, because I got to go. You got to go? I got to go. What, what do you mean you got to go? Mean, where are you going? I, gotta, I got other work oh, to he's do. Oh, he's married. Got... No, I have to review two electric bicycles this afternoon from Vintage Electric. What are you hey. making for dinner? <clears throat> Oh, wait, well, wait, hold tonight, on. But last night I did three chickens. It was great. You and I have been uh, talking about our electric bikes because I just got a Saunders, which oh, is yeah. a local Malibu Saunders. via uh, China. Yeah, I borrowed which this is, one. Which I'm in love with. And Bill got and very aggressive on Instagram that the one that I'm borrowing is a piece of shit and I should get your it's, Saunders. The Saunders, Saunders is amazing. <laughs> but it, but they're all pretty amazing. But yeah. what do you have? I have the Vintage Electric, okay. which I have not paid for. It's the one that John Ward from Icon is involved right. in design, designing. Oh, wow. It's made of metal. It's all billet metal. It weighs like 85 pounds. <clears throat> and it goes. It has a 750-watt motor. Right. It goes 36 miles an hour, sustained. We have 750 in ours. This thing we is, don't go 35, though. This thing's fast. We go 22. No, this is fast. But that's... I don't know. I, I saw that, and I'm not so sure. At, at 22, that's fast enough. Like I drive no, this thing not. up and down the, the hills near my house, right. and I get wherever I need to go. No, the truth is 22 but, to 25 <clears throat> is a good speed. Right. Like I ride right. it to the office from my house yeah. on the bike path, and like 22, 25 is like a good cruise. Right. But. I have different modes. So I have mode one through mode five. So if I want to cruise... You have pedal assist or full electric? or So I have two right now. One is a pedal assist, and the other is on a throttle like a motorcycle. Okay. The, the Mine has both built into it, by the way. Thank well, you. No, the, the throttle one also has pedals, pedal so if it, it dies, okay. you can pedal at home. Right, but right. But it's not... The pedals aren't connected to the power. Right. You so, realize we're all just reinventing the motorcycle again. Well, that's the thing with this one. This one I've got you get is, back into traffic and immediately you feel exposed. Well, yeah. and now you have a tiny little helmet on. Well, this one is yeah. This one's it goes as fast as yeah, like a fifty cc Vespa. Yes, you know. So I, I act like a bicycle sometimes, and I act like a motorcycle yes. other times, it's and it's great. a little interesting. So, but I'm allowed to ride it on the bike path legally, so I am. And I like it. So I got to go home because I got to review those this afternoon. Okay. Well, I'm sorry though. You guys no, can that's continue. Okay. We are going to continue. Mic. Let's just keep going, Zuckerman. Okay. Buy Spikes Car Radio. Uh, uh, if you have, if you're in Los Angeles and you have uh, cars or you want to buy cars, or you're unhappy with the current situation of your car storage. Westside Collector Car Storage is opening September 2019 in Playa Vista, and it's going to be the dopest overbuilt car storage facility <laughs> that ever has been. I can't wait to come there and smoke a cigar. Yep. I'm so excited. I just about did that. the. I just chose the carpets for the cigar lounge, and the theme is Morocco. Ooh. Do you smoke cigars? I'll have a cigar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to save a couple of special ones for you. Right. Matt, Bye, thank guys. you for the stopping in, tire everywhere. All right. Awesome. We're gonna, let's do a couple of bonus embarrassing stories here. You can just put the mic down there. Uh, here we go. Tim O'Graphs. I was on a drive through the middle of nowhere with a friend a few years ago, and he became desperate to take a leak. So we pulled over. He found a tree by the side of the road to do his business, and we carried on. About 10 minutes later, this horrible smell started to fill the cabin. <laughs> he had walked through a horrible dog sh- crap and smeared it all over the back seat. 
to make matters work worse, he can't keep still. So when we turned on the lights, it was everywhere, all over the back of the seats. Uh, this is How horrible. How do you get f- from your foot to the back? We oh, should have just set must- the car on fire. That is disgusting. It's not embarrassing for you, but for your friend. God, how did he not know? He's just an idiot. Um, Designer Ron says, I had to drive a 50 Studebaker bullet nose through high school. I might, like that. Might uh, what's be cool now, but that? not then. Because he's saying not then. Yeah, it wasn't cool right, back okay. then. Right? Yeah, I guess. Uh, the Bad Man V. When I was taking driving lessons in Montreal, we passed by a teenager sitting backwards on the handlebars of his bike while still pedaling. He was also holding his phone and broadcasting on Snapchat. It couldn't have been too long ago. I came to the conclusion that the forward-facing camera will be what destroys Western civilization. I think, uh, I think you missed the topic of today's show, which you is embarrassing want- car stories, not embarrassing yourself with the wrong kind of story story. Well, Maybe that's you- your embarrassing car story, right. sir. You know what I like watching those Russian road rage uh, videos I love and those. the Russian driving videos. Those are amazing to watch. It's a country full of Zuckermans. <laughs> <laughs> J Turf eighty three driving down the highway. The rear window of my ninety three Dodge Stealth suddenly shattered. <laughs> On one Wonderful side of the glass, product. there was what looked like a hole that something had passed through. So we, of course, thought, did someone just shoot at us? <laughs> Fifteen <laughs> minutes into our conversation with five police officers that showed up, I realized that my rear defroster was on and one of the wires was loose and had shorted out, so the window overheated. (laughs) Wow, that's a good story. I don't know, because it's a a Dodge. Because it's a Dodge and it's American, Zuckerman. All right, here we go. You ready? Here's a good this is a good uh, uh, Scheudenfraud Ferrari story. Cartoon says, bought my childhood dream car, a Ferrari. Most of us This is our childhood dream car. Few achieve it. Had it delivered to a friend's house who lived on a hill. Didn't even drive it. Parked, walked inside, and the car rolled down a hill all the way to the PCH, smashing into the curb, and the neighbors found it. Oof. Didn't even have the car for 24 hours yet. That is a short honeymoon period. That's embarrassing. I've, I've done it. I feel for you. I've done, luckily, where my hangar is, the car doesn't roll too far. But boy, is it off-putting when you do it. Uh, the J-Mesh. I owned a Prius in a Subaru Outback. <laughs> That's pretty embarrassing. Yes. Right? In and of itself. Though I will tell you, Zuckerman, the Subaru Outback in those colors, I'm thinking about leasing one. I like it. The, that I blue. Could, I love that, that the blue, blue and the orange. Yes. I would put a trailer hitch on that and drive my kids around. And I love it. And it's cheap and it's fun. What's wrong with that? The Prius. Yeah, Prius is weird. I have a soft spot for them because we had four of them. But they are hideous. They are ugly. And you do want to light them on fire. Um, Brendan Hunt, 88, had a work truck that was used as a mobile diesel fuel truck. When the external tank was being filled, I had them start to fuel the gas tank for the truck. Someone stopped them. But the truck sat motionless for months to add insult mm-hmm. to injury. There it is. Mm-hmm. Petrol in the diesel I knew it would happen. Petrol. Here's another one. Petrol in the diesel. A. Horton 74. Up in the Cascade Mountains in Washington, I went camping with a friend and thought it would be a great idea to rally around the dirt roads in my Passat W8. (laughs) Hit a sizable rock with the oil pan and had to walk 10 miles back to town just to get a cell signal. I think you're cool, Adam. I think you're cool. I don't think that's embarrassing. I think you're cool. Um... Farrington, 1973, was working on an MK2 Mini. I needed supplies, so I put my brand new hood back on without bolting it to the hinges. It said Bolton, like Michael Bolton it to the hinges, as I had done many times before. Little did I know that under hard braking to avoid a 100-year-old lady driving a 70s Saab, that my hood would fly off in dramatic fashion and I would run over it. I, did even, I didn't even stop to pick it up. It was flattened and school children were already dying laughing <laughs> at the incident. Oh, that's good. That's really embarrassing. I knew a girl. She put her Range Rover, an older Range Rover, into neutral instead of park. Do you remember how that it, it could easily get stuck in, in that neutral spot instead yeah, of park? Yeah, yeah, I know. And she went to get out <clears throat> at a gas station where there was a slight grade, and it started to roll, and the door pinched her right at <gasps> her neck. 
and she was getting choked to death and she told me that she looked over and saw a bunch of teenagers laughing hysterically <laughs> and how did she, she was dying and that's the thing that made her the maddest with the kids laughing at her getting choked and by she her pushed car. it off her no fortunately somebody saw and pushed the car forward <gasps> and released her good from the death grip god good god good god mark tepp uh, says installing a new rear glass window in the Wrangler hardtop should have read the instructions to replace the one hinge at a time ended up blowing the price of tempered glass above I think he means piece of tempered glass above my head and all over my friends in the workshop and the cars whoops already read the effing manual I you know boy again I'm, I'm telling you, Zuckerman, if I sat down and put myself to work here, I could write 100 pages uh-huh. of my own. Yes. You know how I like to fiddle with cars and sure. work on them and wrench on them. And that, for a guy who was never trained to do it, that comes with a steep learning curve. Mm-hmm. And the amount of stuff that I don't talk about that I've broken on very expensive cars that I've then had to fix that some of you mechanics in Southern California know about. But that's the price of learning. And I now stand by my methods. And I, and, I, and I feel good when I fix my cars. It's nice. I enjoy it. And I relate to this guy. What is it? I don't like to read the instruction manual. I don't either. No, right? I can't. I, I can do this. I don't need to read these <clears throat> damn instructions. No. I will pull up a YouTube video and step-by-step it if I hit a roadblock. And that, that usually helps. Um, can you keep going? Yeah, of course. All right. 86- Bill, make us some <clears throat> eggs, please. He it's will. Often. We're almost done. Can we have some eggs? We want some eggs. We're dying. We're dying? We're dying for eggs. It's a simple question. No. That's that's the hat thief. The cap thief. We're gonna we're we're about to wrap up. We're giving them some few bonus stories, but we'd love to eat right after we're done. Yes, sir. Thank you, Bill. You keep that hat cash. Hat extortion. That's Bill Miller, the Malibu Kitchen. Come down here, buy yourself a hat, have yourself a burrito, enjoy your life. 86 Mustang, I pulled out of a friend's driveway with a mission to impress. (laughs) Always. always It's a Mustang guy, Zuckerman. It's a Mustang guy. The tires were screaming for mercy, smoke (laughs) everywhere, and the blissful sounds of the supercharged V8 howling in the midnight air. We know it's a Mustang. I was proud of myself and my car. It seems two law enforcement officers were sitting in the parking lot nearby. I did not see them. They were not amused. <laughs> there you go. We Mustang like that. owners. They are a certain kind of guy. I tried to I tried to outrun the cops in my 79 Formula Firebird, the same color as, as Jim Rockford's on Scottsdale Boulevard, and uh, I saw the lights way behind, and I floored it. He was never going to catch me, and I went around the corner in gravel, and I stalled out. And again, that was in a time where the cops, I think, were, were happy to have had a little chase. They kept us sitting on the right, sidewalk right, for right. about an hour, yeah. and then they let us go. It's before things get complicated. Here's a guy who told the same story. Laughs 23. Took my Firebird to the drag strip for the first time. Did a huge John Force burnout, thinking I was a badass. Pull up at the tree. Green light drops and stall it in front of everyone. The fuel nice. pump died. That's bad. That's embarrassing, right? But I don't know. Drag races can be kind of boring. Here comes the co-owner of our GT2 RS, Moise. Oh, Look, he just Momo. feels free to sit down. We are recording, Mo, so just give us one second. We're almost done. Uh, Louis Albert the third. I hit a curb while trying to drift my Volvo 240 in the rain. Not so bad. Rhino, 25. I once locked myself out of the car while the car was running. I had an old Accord with no power doors. I opened the door and locked it from the inside without realizing I didn't turn off the engine until right before the door closed. Oh, not good. Who is Julian? Eight quarts of motor oil. Oh, we did. We took that. He wrote it twice. Julian. All right. Let's let's uh, take this baby home, Zucker. And I'm looking for a good one here. Here we go. Snob Big P. That time, again, he's outing someone else, Zuckerman. Mm. (laughs) I like that the listeners want to out their friends with embarrassing stories. So I will do this for you. And it's not going to help your friendship with Jacques Barborek. Jacques (laughs) Barborek. That time Jacques Barborek sunk his Subaru Justy in a lake. Nice. 
He thought it would float across a quarry, but wouldn't do a U-turn back to the boat ramp. And he jumped into the lake. Sadly, the dealer didn't warrant the hydro-locked engine. I, I didn't quite understand I don't understand that story. the way he wrote it. Not everybody's a writer, Zuckerman, but it sounds like Jacques Baborak was drunk. He was lowering his boat like, uh, like any number of videos on the qualified uh, captain feed on Instagram. Uh, and uh, the, the, the Subaru Justy went into the water and just floated away. That's truly embarrassing. There's nothing more embarrassing than not being able to load your boat right into the water. Um, and sinking your it's car. It's an unintentional plug for the qualified captain. That's full of embarrassing boat stories. Well, that's all we have for you folks. Zuckerman, before uh, we go, uh, go to the Pebble Beach uh, Classic Car Forum, but part of the Pebble Beach uh, uh, Concours, and you will see. Finally, you can get tickets to my panels with Patrick Dempsey and Hurley Haywood on one day and Adam Carolla on the next um, get the tickets before they're sold out. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be on stage. If you can't make it across the country or to this part of the world to see the shows, I will record them, and I will release them as a podcast. Um, also, we have a new Blip Shift shirt coming up. You've got to check it out. It's just in time for bye, the Monterey bye, bye. Car Week. You're going to love it. It honors our good friend, the real Zuckerman and co-host. You're going to have to check that out. Zuckerman, do you have anything to add? Just... No, not a thing. Not a thing? Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to Spike's Car Radio. We'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks for listening to Spike's Car Radio. Download new episodes every Wednesday on the Podcast One app or subscribe now at Apple Podcasts or PodcastOne.com. Hey, it's Adam Carolla letting you know about my newest podcast, Going Racing. Me and Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, that is. We'll uh, highlight the fastest cars. We'll talk about the best races and the best celebrities in motorsports. Subscribe now at Podcast One.